So I'd like to introduce you to our host today, Joy Lele Shi. Well, good afternoon. Um, I'm Lele Shikasato. I'm Lele Shikasato. I am on the board of Blue Frontier, and I'm chair of the Sierra Club National Marine Team. My husband, my Martine, and I are so delighted to welcome you to our house. So we're so glad to be sharing this important day of celebrating the sea together with you. And what brings us together here today, I'm sure, is our love of the oceans and our recognition that we must continue to do what we can to save our oceans, its ecosystems, and our planet. I'm an oceanographer as well as a marine conservationist, and I won't take up too much of your time here, as I know I'm not here what I'm here, uh, here to hear what I have to say, excuse me. <laughs> um, since we have such an exciting lineup of speakers that I can't wait to introduce you to. Um, but I'm committed to the ocean for so many reasons. Um, not only do I feel more at home in the ocean than, than on land, I know that the oceans are our biggest tool against climate change. Through my research, I've marveled at the cleverness and resilience of marine organisms and ecosystems and their ability to adapt. Um, and just last week, I took my toddler out on a paddleboard for the first time and he absolutely loved it. And it was like getting to fall in love with being on the ocean for a second time. Um, and not least of all, the desire to save oceans and love of scuba diving is what brought um, my husband, um, and love of my life, Martine, together. And so to the oceans, I owe infinite gratitude. Um, now, without further ado, a quick introduction to our speakers. Our first speaker um, <clears throat> speaker will be Ava Harrow. Um, she is a high school student. She is our youth ambassador and an ocean youth activist. And at the age of 16, Ava was already doing graduate level research at UC Santa Cruz and sharing this research with the community via public outreach. She has also joined me and my team in Washington, D.C. to discuss ocean policy with federal agencies and Congress people. Without a doubt in my mind, Ms. Harrow will be running the world in some way, shape, or form in the not-too-distant future. Um, and then after that, we will have Marin Supervisor and Board President Dennis Rodoni, a native of the area. We are grateful for his commitment to protecting the environment and towards sustainability and his priorities of climate change and sea level rise adaptations for the county. Supervisor Rodoni has done so much for our community and it is a great honor to have him here today. Next we'll have, well, actually. Fingers um, crossed. Fingers, fingers crossed. Um, it, it, the order may shift, but um, then we'll have the inimitable Sylvia Earle. Dr. Earle needs no introduction but she is my greatest hero. She's not only a highly accomplished oceanographer, the first female chief scientist at NOAA, Time Magazine's first hero for the planet in 1998, and still holds the world record for the deepest untethered dive by any human to 1,250 feet, for which she earned her title, Her Deepness, and so much more. And then finally, we'll hear from David Helvarg, our director of Blue Frontier, the author of several books and journalist who has reported from every continent, including Antarctica. And he will share with us the state of the ocean. So first up, Ava. And then we'll hear back from you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Layla. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here today. Um, as Layla has said, my name is Ava Harrow. And while that name might not mean a lot to you right now, just wait. Um, we're here today for a love that we all share for this vast, beautiful, and mysterious environment. The ocean has always been my favorite place. Something about its rhythm and exclusiveness that I can't seem to walk away from. The fascination for the deep blue has led me to pursue research and study marine biology at Seymour Long Marine Lab at UC Santa Cruz. And it is here that I have had the opportunity to be a part of numerous research projects and watch discovery in my own hands. Through my work at UC Santa Cruz, I have been able to bridge the gap between scientific knowledge and the wider community. And by working in public outreach programs and sharing these findings, I have witnessed the firsthand power of education and the, aware and the awareness of inspiring a change. Climate change, plastic pollution, global warming, overfishing, and habitat destruction are just a few of the issues threatening our, the delicate balance of marine ecosystems. These problems are not distant concerns. We are actively seeing them, the damaging impacts on marine life. 
the majestic North Atlantic right whale population has reached critical levels and is functionally extinct. Once vibrant and lively coral reefs around the world have become barren and bleached. We are not only destroying our planet, but we are watching it burn. We need more than a few hands to put out this fire. Many fear that my generation does not have enough to fight for what they cannot see, but thankfully I wholeheartedly believe that we do. You see, my generation, my generation is the future, and we will inherit the consequences of the actions taken today. We must embrace and act wisely to ensure a sustainable future and then for ourselves and generations to come. We must embrace the ocean not only as a source of beauty and inspiration, but as the fragile ecosystem that is begging for our protection. We must embrace its resilience through small everyday actions, such as re reducing our plastic consumption, supporting sustainable choices, and spreading awareness about it, the importance of the ocean. We can create a ripple effect that re will resonate globally by, res by leveraging our collective voice and advocating for policy changes. We can push for stronger environmental regulations and protections. I have been fortunate enough to be the junior ambassador for the Sierra Club Marine Team for some time now, and getting to work with the incredible Lele Shikasado and David Helvig and many others to spread the message and continue this war. We must foster cur curiosity and a love for the ocean for younger generations by inspiring them in the wonders of the marine world. We can cultivate a sense of responsibility towards the environment from a young age. David Attenborough said, if children don't grow up knowing about nature and appreciating it, they will not understand it. And if they do not understand it, they will not protect it. And if they do not protect it, who will? Let it be me, let it be you, let it be all of us. Thank you. All right, well, so we'll have Supervisor Rodoni next. Thank you, Ava. It's so nice to hear our young adults stepping up because we need them. Um, I'm Dennis Rodoni. I uh, grew up in West Marin, and I was elected to do, in 2016 to serve as the District 4 Supervisor for Marin County. <clears throat> and my district includes, amongst other things, includes the coast of Marin from Dillon's Beach to Muir Beach, a really important part of District 4 and, and an part, important part of the county. Last week at the Marin Conservation League's 90th anniversary dinner, Ed Huber, a friend of mine and former superintendent of the Greater Fairlawns National Marine Sanctuary, received an award for his years of service to ocean conservation. In his speech, he reminded the room about a number, 70%. He reminded them that number is 70% of the earth is water and we are planet water. The concept of planet water is often unseen or not understood by many people. As the ocean is vast and unknown to so many, we all know the ocean provides oxygen, absorbs carbon, carbon regulates our climate, provides important food sources and medicine, and is rich with biodiversity to an estimated one million species that are culturally important to the people, excuse me, you can notice the size of the letters on mine compared to Ava's. It gives you, gives you some insight into what, why we need the young people. Anyway, people all over the world. Here in Marin County, the coast and the ocean are part of our communities and our government, county government, is surrounded by the Pacific Ocean. Our, our county is surrounded by the Pacific Ocean. Marin is a leader in coastal and ocean protection and preservation along with our federal, state, and community partners because we value the global, global significance of biodiversity of our lands and water. Marin's coastline from Dillon's Beach to Muir Beach is about 70 miles and today following public protections and preservation of the actions of the 1960s and 90s through 90s it's a patchwork of public land, open space, trails, coastal public access, rural coastal villages, agriculture and aquaculture operations. We're fortunate to have a dynamic coastal and ocean conservation areas such as lands and water systems in Marin. And these are important migratory pathways along our coast for fish, marine mammals, birds, and other species. 
Some notable mentions in marine coastal and ocean conservation portfolio, the Point Reyes National Seashore and Drake's Estero Marine Wilderness Area, one of the last remaining undeveloped estuary systems in California, the Greater Farallons National Marine Sanctuary, and uh, which includes Bolinas Lagoon and Tamales Bay, Cordell Bank, the Point Reyes National Seashore just off our coast, and 12 California marine protected areas. I don't need to tell this crowd, as you're all aware, that human impacts and mismanagement have been and continue to harm the health of the ocean. What do we do here in Marin? We continue to support regulations to manage fisheries, protect coastal access, and marine protected areas to protect the biodiversity and allow for people to connect with the oceans and the coast. However, we have new challenges now. They've been happening for several years, and we quite honestly maybe not paid enough attention to those, and that's climate change and sea level rise. The county is working to develop a climate mitigation strategy to seek and reduce the reliance on fossil fuels and the conversion to renewable energy sources. Renewable energy sources. We're also looking at how our counties and our communities can adapt to climate change. This is extremely important to me, as my district includes, as I said, 70 miles of the Pacific shoreline, all of our coastal villages, as well as my bayside communities in San Rafael Canal area, San Quentin, Corte Madera, and Larkspur. All of these communities are vulnerable to increasing sea, level, sea levels. Last month, the county just announced a countywide regional effort to identify risks, vulnerabilities, and potential adaptations we need to make, our, to make in our communities. This program will help leverage the funding that is needed to protect our coast and our bay, bayside shores through nature-based solutions. My office is directly involved in participating to ensure coastal representation and I will keep our, account, our communities aware, engaged, and informed as this process goes forward. Though Marin is just one county the, in the global scheme, scheme of things, I believe we can make a difference by setting an example of partnership and collaboration across jurisdictions with our local communities to act to protect our coast, ocean, communities today, and for future generations. I want to thank you for inviting me here today. And if you want to know more about what we're doing on the coast in Marin related to sea level rise, my aide Morgan has these available, which gives a summary of the work we are doing. So thank you so much. Pleasure being with you. Thanks for the invite. And what a wonderful location and venue to appreciate the ocean. So I almost felt like I didn't want to say anything. State of the ocean at the moment is uh, overheated, overfished and too polluted with uh, oil, chemicals, uh, nutrients, and plastic. Uh, they just announced, isn't this one working? They just announced that uh, we're now entering the fourth global bleaching event. Covered the first one, 1997-98. This is the worst one. Over half the world's corals are now bleaching from marine heat, uh, increasing 1% a week. This is because last year was the hottest uh, year in history, including 90% of the ocean experiencing marine heat waves. So um, it's tough. I mean, the thing is, I'm not despairing and none of us should be despairing. We should be frustrated because we know what the solutions are. The challenge is creating the political will to enact those solutions. And that's what Blue Frontier has been doing for over 20 years now, trying to build a constituency to turn the tide for good ocean policies that can protect the things we love. Um, as I say, we believe in triage. Um, we're gonna save what we can while we can. Uh, and uh, as I say, and, and part of that is that we are having results. Um, two recent victories, the UN passed a high seas treaty that could soon mean half of the world all of the high seas ocean outside the exclusive economic zones of coastal states could be protected from overfishing and hopefully from industrial uh, deep sea mining. Um, these are the kind of protecting the biodiversity of half the world. 70% of it is salt water. 
Half of it is on the high seas. I also just finished a story for American Indian Magazine, Smithsonian's magazine on the four tribes up on the Klamath River, who after a hundred years of struggle have taken down the four dams that have impounded that river for over a century. By the end of this year, the dams will be down. I was up on the headwaters with, with Yurik youth who are replanting. They've grown 13 billion seeds into plants. So the native plants will fill up all the drained reservoirs. And in two years, there'll be 400 miles of new or really restored habitat, um, spawning habitat for the salmon and their other spirit brothers. And locally, you know, you fight globally, you fight locally. Locally in uh, Richmond, California, we've got one of our Blue Frontier projects, Point Melody Alliance, been fighting for 18 years now, a beautiful 420 acre headland on San Francisco Bay. And because it's a low income community of color, when I first moved there, they were trying to sell it off for a mega casino. In the last few years, the plan was a high end housing estate. And now we got 36 million from the state and we're in final negotiations between East Bay Regional Parks and the failed casino developers to establish a public park in our underpark community. <laughs> and, there's, um, and, and a lot of it comes back. So the last two years, we partnered with the Center for the Blue Economy at the Middlebury Institute for International Studies. Started in 2019 when the Green New Deal came out, we realized there was no blue in it. So we formed a coalition Everyone from Jane Fonda and um, John Kerry to environmental justice leaders. Uh, eventually we lobbied, we got $10 billion of ocean funding into the IRA Ocean Act, the first climate legislation in US history, significant legislation. And um, like 3 billion of that is for um, ports and shipping to electrify, decarbonize those ports. So in Richmond, we talked, we found out the local you know, city council wasn't aware of the funding. And because it's a small community, poor community, it didn't have the staffing. So we brought in a graduate student, helped them apply for the funding. We got three million, one thousandth of that three billion is going to the port of Richmond to electrify our carport, to generate jobs at the local level. So if we move forward on climate, which is saying moving forward on the ocean, really comes down to the election in November. Um, those bleached corals can't vote, so we have to. Um, we either move forward or we fail. And it's all too precious to fail. Uh, what else, uh, just a little more. Our latest uh, work, you can see a 14 minute Sylvia's here. Hello. Two days ago, she won the Ken Burns Award at the uh, Ocean Center at the National Mu Museum of Natural History in New York. Um, she's like, I don't know what the marine equivalent of the ever ready bunny is, but <laughs> put fins on a bunny, you got Sylvia. Uh, just a couple of other things uh, in terms of our latest work on ocean climate action is our kelp forest. Kelp is the new coral. Kelp is endangered. You can see if you haven't been down, Natasha there, uh, Natasha Benjamin and Anna Blanco are co-directing our next documentary, which is Sequoias of the Sea. It's a work in progress. You can see right downstairs our first 14 minutes. I'm starting work on my next book, which will be uh, Blue Forest, you know, kelp, climate, outlaws, otters, the future of the ocean. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's following my last book, The Golden Shore, which is important because what we've been doing for 20 years is trying to grow solutions faster than the problems. And when I moved back from DC to California, I realized we're the solution. California, we've got 40 million people almost. We're the world's fourth largest economy. And yet we're doing good by our coast and ocean. And the rewards are not just economic, they're spiritual. I mean, there it is. So you protect what you love. And just one final thing. Uh, after 20 years of uh, battling to change policy and build movements, we finally have a flagship for Blue Frontier. And it's the 50-foot Queen of the Coast, which is a William Hand design, 1934 motor sailor. It's right now, it's up in Fort Bragg, which is ground zero for a loss of kelp. If you want to learn more, if you want to come aboard, 
uh, talk to our board president and Commodore David Schwartz over there. But as I say, you know, it's all about, I don't know if I call it hope, I call it, you know, as I said, triage. We're gonna save what we can while we can because what else are we gonna do? You know, it's just, the ocean gives us so much in terms of transportation, recreation, you know, food, hope, weather, rain, you know, feeds our crops, slacks our thirst, and thank God stops at 2 p.m. So with that, and another rain front coming, but before it arrives, her deepness, Sylvia Earle. So I'll try to lift my voice. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Thank you for the opportunity, David, to come through that windy road <laughs> to salute you and to salute all of you and to share what the joy of being a 21st century human being. We are the first of our species to know what is now known. Even 10 years ago, let alone when I was 10 years old, the things that have been learned that give us the best chance we will ever have to change this trajectory that we're witnessing, land, air, sea, all of it. Earth is in trouble, so are we. But we are not without power to do something about it, starting with knowing that leads to caring. You said you didn't know whether it was hope or not, Hope alone doesn't cut it, but hope leading to action is where we're at. That's, where, that's why you're here, thanks to David, thanks to whatever motivated you to appear here to see perhaps if you could get some of the whatever it is that brings us together to not just say, woe is us, Earth is in trouble. Isn't that sad? We're in trouble. What can I do? Am I, you know, it occurred to me some time ago when asked by a, a kid, I'm just one kid, what can I do? It just seemed, I can't tell this kid. I don't, I'm not who he is or she, whoever it is. I can't tell you what your power is, but only you know what you care about enough to, st to stretch a little bit, to go beyond your comfort zone, or even if it's in your comfort zone, to do what you can as a headline. Really understand, Earth is in trouble and so are we. We're not without power. Everybody can do Something, the choice you make about what to eat or not, what to wear or not, what you do in your everyday lives or not. That's what makes the difference times eight billion of us. All eight billion won't do what I'm suggesting, what you can do as individuals, but if enough of us start kind of moving in the right direction toward taking action that will safeguard nature, whether it's in your backyard, in your community, your country, whatever it is, whatever power you have to vote. Yes, vote. I don't have to tell you how, because you know. <laughs> We have, again, the best chance in all of human history to either 
consume whatever is left of nature or to stop in our tracks. Save what we can of everything that is working and do everything we can to restore what can be restored. And I'm serious, you can do it in your backyard. We're standing on a bit of lawn here, that's okay. But when I, I see that there are a lot of things growing here, not just, you know, what? We have um, natives all around. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is not astroturf. <laughs> This is kind of beautiful, but consider how much of land we have, we have transformed. About half just for agriculture of all of the land. The ocean, 97% is open for exploitation. Only about 3% is deliberately highly protected. Suppose we do the flip. Suppose we open 3% for use and we do everything we can to save 97% of the ocean. <laughs> Why not? Right now, we're on a track aiming for 30% in the next six years. 30 by 30 is the goal, land and sea. That's a, that's a good start. But as Ed Wilson and others are saying, why stop there? Why stop at 30% when we need nature to prosper wherever we can make nature prosper? And if we did not know how much trouble we are in because of the trouble the natural world is in, that would be a problem. But here we are. Thank you. Thank you for having me just come and endorse what you're doing. <laughs> and I really look forward to whatever happens. You're going to do this again next year, right? Somewhere? Sure. Someplace? Let's, let's, let's sort of take stock about where we are and aim for this time next year to be on a trajectory going in this direction. Good deal. All right. Well, I'm just so inspired. Um, and you've just heard from voices across generations about the importance of protecting our oceans and what our team at Blue Frontier is doing to ensure our oceans can continue to thrive for future gener generations. This is why I do the work that I do <clears throat> and why I'm a donor and supporter for Blue Frontier. Um, it's been so wonderful to enjoy this day and celebration of the sea with all of you today. This is why we're all here. Um, it's, and so at this time, I'd like to invite anyone who'd like to give a tax deductible donation to Blue Frontier to support our continued work on everything that you have just heard about. Um, we can take donations via square, cash, or check. Please see Nick, Gabby, or Natasha at the check-in, check-out table. Um, and also, please bid on our many wonderful auction items. Um, and I, the, the rain is coming, so I'm going to wrap it up. The support is immensely appreciated, and we promise to continue to make the greatest impact we can to save the oceans we all love. Thank you again, and continue to enjoy the afternoon. Woo!